opposite of what the people have been asking it to do. Mr. Speaker, the other uh, value that I wanted him to speak to is the question of the steps taken by his government and the progress that has been achieved in strengthening democracy. Now, here I went for a double shot, Mr. Speaker, and I will explain why. The first reason, Mr. Speaker, and Honorable Kalwale has spoken very eloquently about what their generation did in order for them to achieve the freedoms that we enjoy this, uh, this, this, during this time, Mr. Speaker, including the freedom of speech, and I suspect Kalwale, even the freedom of demonstration and the right to picket. I saw myself, leaders of the church, being bludgeoned here. As a child, I saw those pictures of Reverend Joya in the streets here being bludgeoned by police officers just because he was exercising his right to protest. This same regime, this same government, Mr. Speaker, is doing the very same things. In fact, this year alone, it has bludgeoned more people than Moi bludgeoned during the time for multi-party democracy. As a leader of the opposition, I know that I have a right under Article 35, a right that Boni and his generation fought very strongly for, for me to be able to express my disaffection with the policy of government by protesting, by picketing. Now, I don't know how I can define picketing for my brother, uh, Ondo Bokhalwale, but picketing includes putting a sufuria on your head. That sufuria on my head is not the solution I'm proffering because I had proffered a solution that at the moment, because Kenyans are going through a difficult time, Mr. Speaker, please retain the subsidies. Please do not increase the taxation on fuel. Those are the proposals that came from my mouth, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. So that when you see me putting a sufuria on my head, that is not the solution. That is me picketing and drawing your attention to the solutions I'm proffering. But you have refused to listen to the people of Kenya. And yet the president would come and stand before the hallowed house of parliament and say that he acknowledges that as a leader, he has a responsibility to listen to the people of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, contrary to what many people believe, I actually admire Senator Halwale. Because I have studied his history. You are some of the people who have inspired some of us to come to this house. We know your skills as a debater. But Mr. Halwale, Senator Halwale, sometimes I understand your position as a whip in this house of the majority. You are handicapped. Some things you don't want to say openly here on the floor or even in public gatherings. Senator uh, Halwale, those confessions you have made here, that in fact in your stellar uh, career as a politician, you have never been as unpopular as you are right now. And it is not because of your undoing. I honestly believe Halwale has not changed. The only thing that has changed, Senator Halwale, is that you are defending the indefensible. The people of Malinya, I can confirm, they still love their senator. But they don't agree with the policies of the government that you support. And I wish, Mr. Speaker, the same admissions that have been made by Senator Halwale on this floor would come from the mouth of the president that he acknowledges that, in fact, some of the policies that he has put in place have made his government un unpopular because they do not resonate with what Kenyans want to do. Mr. Speaker, let me now come to what I consider untruths, misleading statements about the state of the nation. Mr. Speaker, the president spoke about many things. And these matters have been fact-checked by many people, including uh, reputable media houses here on if indeed what he was saying is true. Let me start by the easiest, because Mr. Speaker, outside there, I'm known as the permanent representative of the people of Kenya on matters of unga. And it is because, as a lawyer, I think I am an authority on food. Mr. Speaker, the president said in his own speech that a packet of flour, maize meal, is now retailing between 145 and 175, and he added a very clever rider, depending on the brand, down from 250. Mr. Speaker, I want to submit to this House that that statement is, in fact, not true. I have conducted my own research in supermarkets here in Nairobi. The average price of unga is still 200 shillings for a packet of 2 kgs. And this is something, because we host you here in Nairobi, you are welcome to do. Mr. Speaker, in previous arguments, I have tried to convince this Senate that, in fact, the definition of food security includes a, a reference to people's preferences. If, for instance, my household has been eating jogo, unga, and I was buying it at 100 shillings, and it goes to 250, you cannot then try to convince me to start buying another brand that I have never heard of, that I don't know where it comes from, that now buy this one because it is 150. 
the preferences of people have to be included in food security. You cannot therefore tell us that depending on the brand you want, you can buy unga at 100. I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, any single thing in this country is contraband, including some of the liquor that we undertook uh, or took during the president's speech in that famous game I've been referring to. There's uh, an industry that has sprung up called Karyobangi, uh, light industries. We cannot vouch for the authenticity of everything, but Kenyans can expect quality from certain brands and that's what they go for. Mr. Speaker, we were told about the question of subsidizing the price of fertilizer. Now, it is public record that in fact some of these sub, uh, subsidized fertilizer came to this country as a donation, as a donation from the government of Russia. And this is something that the government of Russia confirmed to us publicly. If you receive something for free, you cannot tell us you have reduced its price. It's that simple. You got it for free. You cannot tell me you have reduced its price. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, this is another obvious untruth by the head what of state the on the question Senator of fertilizer. Chute. Honorable Senator is misleading this house. He is talking about free fertilizers. Can he provide evidence, table this evidence before this house? Senator for Nairobi, can you substantiate your claim? And if you cannot, you proceed to withdraw it. Mr. Speaker, I will request for time to table evidence by, uh, from uh, the speeches from the leadership of the Republic of uh, Federal Republic of Russia that they, in fact, gave a donation of fertilizer. So, when do you intend so to give me time. You can give me until tomorrow. I until will table tomorrow. it. Absolutely, Mr. Speaker. Let me proceed to something else that I consider. What is the point of order, Senator Boni? Sorry, Mr. Speaker. I wish not to offend you. But because we have been engaged on wild goose chess in this house before in terms of substantiation, caution them that he should not come here with newspaper reports. He should come here with evidence. Authenticated extracts of speeches of the leadership of, the, of Russia, which we know. Senator Boni, you cannot teach the chair on what to communicate. I know exactly what amounts to a substantiation. And whatever the senator will bring must, of course, meet that standard. If it won't, the chair will rule. Proceed, Senator. Sifat. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There is another half-truth, Mr. Speaker, that was spoken on the floor of the House, that in fact, 56,000 new teachers had been employed this year alone. Now, the problem there is that on the face of it, it appears like the head of state knows what he's talking about. But data from the TSC itself indicates that up to 80% of that 56,000 teachers were hired on short-term contracts, Mr. Speaker. And only 20% of those are permanently employed. That is something you need to say to the state, to the nation, so that we know the true state of affairs when it comes to the hiring of our teachers. Mr. Speaker, let me continue. He also announced that in September, or that in June of this year, his administration would employ 103 community health promoters. And we saw him uh, flagging off distribution of 100,000 kits to be used by those people. Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is that that is not true. That is not true. In fact, counties are supposed to identify the people to be recruited at C as C CHPs, and that progress is ongoing. So you cannot claim something has happened, yet it has not happened, just to massage the numbers and appear like your government is working. Next, Mr. Speaker, he told us, I am on the speech. These are contents of the president's what, speech. I'm not what making is up point of order? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I had to interrupt uh, the senator for Nairobi. The Mr. Sifuna, if it's factual, let it form part of those factual claims that you Please, I, I, will, I will substantiate whatever you. is required for me to substantiate. Because, Mr. Speaker, the truth is the only fire, uh, uh, weapon we have against the lies that uh, are there in the world. Mr. Speaker, let me go to the question of uh, recruitment of health care workers. Told us 20,000 health care workers have been employed 
This one is also not true. In fact, the reports we have are that only about 1,200 interns were deployed to hospitals since the beginning of the year, not the 3,394 that the President spoke about. Let me conclude, uh, Mr. Speaker, on the question of Wi-Fi hotspots. And this one, if you want me to substantiate, I will take you to the hotspot. We were told that he has set up a Wi-Fi hotspots across the country, including here in Nairobi County, in markets such as Muthurwa and city markets. This one, I will just invite you to carry your devices to city market. It is walking distance here, Mr. Speaker. And you will see that, in fact, those things do not work. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the famous one of Hustler Fund. Are you yes. saying it wasn't, uh, uh, it's not working or it's not, it wasn't provided? Mr. Speaker, I have told this House on previous occasion that, in fact, I was there. I have 20 minutes. Mr. Speaker, I was present with the CS4 ICT at, at uh, City Market on the day of the launch. Weeks later, I was being called by traders there that that thing no longer works, and that is the current situation today. Mr. Speaker, let me finish with the question of the Hustler Fund. First, people need to understand one thing, that what Mamamboga needs is the purchasing power of the, their customers to grow or to be retained at the level at which it was. It is pointless for you to give Mamamboga a loan to expand, quote-unquote, their business, and yet you are raiding the pockets of our customers in a way that it is impossible for them to spend money at Mamamboga's stall. Number two, Mr. Speaker, the CBK data shows that the default rate of the loans borrowed uh, under this Hustler Fund is higher than the ones of the uh, commercial banks. Mr. Speaker, out of the 10.2 billion shillings, that is outstanding. What, the, what is your point of order, Senator Veronica? Right away. Mr. Are Speaker, you able to substantiate on the default on the loan repayment? Mr. Speaker, you can give me some credit as the person who represents the traders at these markets. I am in constant communication with these people. We are not talking about Wi-Fi in Kiambu. We are talking about Wi-Fi in Nairobi, the people I represent. Very well. If you want very to well, substantiate Senator. whether Wi-Fi is working, you go there and try it. Senator Sifuna. You go there and try it. Senator Spooner, there is a point of order that has been raised. The second one, and Mr. I'm Speaker. And I'm proceeding to yes. make a ruling on it. The, the second one. One, this is my ruling on the point of order raised by uh, Senator Veronica. Just take a seat. One, you've been called upon to substantiate on the issue of Wi-Fi. That you cannot do right away because certainly you need a technical report. So... Again, you will bring that substantiation tomorrow as you substantiate on the earlier point of order. Then there is an, uh, some facts you need to substantiate the issue of default on repayment of the loans from the hustler vis-a-vis -vis the commercial loans. Are you able to substantiate right now? Proceed to substantiate. Mr. Speaker, you know we should not engage here in what we call kizungumingi. This is a term of art we use here in Nairobi. That when people are unable to explain to the Wanainchi what they have done, they want reports, technical reports. What technical report does a trader in Muthurwa need to know that when he tries to log in, so the thing is not Sifuna, working? I have, on the question, I have yes, on the question of the default rate, yes. Mr. Speaker, these are the figures from the CPK. Mr. Speaker, can I be allowed to proceed? Allow I am the most interrupted senator, senator in this house. Sheet. For heaven's Order. sake. Order. Order, Honorable Senators. Allow the Senator. To, you have raised a, a point of order. Let the Senator something shade. Thereafter, you will rise on your point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, the question of the default rate is a question of math and your capacity to comprehend math. 10.2 billion shillings outstanding as loans. 3 billion out of that, Mr. Speaker, which is almost 30 percent, is listed as non-performing loans. Now, you don't need to be a genius to know what non-performing loans mean. Then you take that figure of 30%, Mr. Speaker, compare it with the figure of default in commercial banks. You will see which one has a higher default rate. And I will provide that evidence, in fact, tomorrow of what the current default rate for commercial loans are vis-a-vis -vis the default rate That's of, exactly what... Yeah, that is very simple for me to do, so Mr. Proceed. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, let me conclude. What is your point of order, Senator Kenya? Mr. Speaker... The Senator of Nairobi cannot 
assume or pretend, Mr. Speaker, he monopolizes Mutura market. The President of the Republic of Kenya, William Samoy Rapruto, represent those people. They voted for him the way they voted for him. So he cannot pretend by saying, every time he's standing here to speak, Mr. Speaker, to say I represent those people. They call me every day. They call the President as well. They call us as well, Mr. Speaker. What is your point of order? The point of order, Mr. Speaker, is 105, Mr. Speaker. He's misleading this House. Senator Sifuna, in reference to the people of Nairobi, uh, you have to know that the people of Nairobi voted for six leaders. All those six leaders represent the people of Nairobi, including His Excellency the President. Can you proceed? Very well, Mr. Speaker. It is also important for you to note that of the six people who were elected in Nairobi, I received the highest votes of those six people, including more votes than the President in Nairobi. So I speak for more people than him. Mr. Speaker, let me finalize by saying, unfortunately for me, I don't get the privilege of putting, uh, you know, televising my telephone conversations with uh, the traders in Muthuru and the traders in, uh, in, in, in the other markets, Mr. Speaker, like the president was pretending to do. But the truth of the matter is these people communicate with their leaders. Let me finalize, Mr. Senator Speaker. Senator Sifuna, you need to start using parliamentary language. What's unparliamentary? You know, when you say the president was pretending. Mr. Speaker, that was obviously a staged call. Everybody can see in the, in the video. It was a staged call, and we should call it for what it is. Senator Sifona, I'm guiding you. If you proceed in that manner, you know exactly what will be you. <laughs> proceed. <laughs> Speaker, let me finalize by addressing the question of uh, some of the reasons that the president gave for what... Uh, uh, tribulations Kenyans are going through. And Mr. Speaker, for the first time, the head of state acknowledges that events outside of Kenya have a bearing on the state of the nation. And he cited the Ukraine war. And Mr. Speaker, of late, we are hearing that in fact, the war in Gaza might even affect the prices of fuel. This is a radical departure from the position that the president took during the campaigns. He in fact dismissed any involvement or any a, a role of outside events, including the war in Ukraine that began before the election in the state of the nation, that he has chosen now to turn and